Amen. Aren't you thankful to feel his presence? And I'm glad to be in his presence tonight. Amen. There may be somebody somewhere in his presence that doesn't feel it. I want to feel his presence, not just be in his presence. Amen. Amen. Let's pray tonight and ask God to touch his word to our heart. Would you do that? God, we love you. We're eternally thankful and grateful. We're indebted, God, for the opportunity you've given us to be here. And I'm asking you, oh Lord, to touch all of our hearts and help us as we center our minds and our lives around your eternal truths. Help us to be changed. Help us to be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. To be sure, Satan will do everything that he possibly can to steal any measure of hope that anyone may have. I don't want to overstate the obvious tonight, but when we look around at the condition that our world is in, we could even be more specific and talk about the condition that our country is in. On one hand, everywhere around us, there is alarming evidence that things are not what they were just a few years ago. But for the church, amen, the church who has refused to drive her tent stakes down too deep in the soil of this place we call earth, we have not forgotten where the source of our true strength comes from. Amen. I am thankful for everyone who serves in any capacity that helps us enjoy the freedoms that we have today. But I will tell you that that's not where our hope is hinged. Our hope is hinged on the word of God. With every situation presently attacking the minds and the hearts of so many people, it is clear to see the sinister hand of hell, nothing less than the sinister hand of hell at work. We have all faced serious situations and even serious challenges over the last several months. And we know what it is like, and it's all right to say amen here, we know what it is like to have our hope come under attack. Amen. Our faith to be challenged. The very foundation of who we are, what we believe and what we stand for, we feel that being challenged. And that's why we need to have a constant supply of hope that flows into our life. Amen. When someone's trying to steal something, then we gotta make sure that whatever's being bled off is being poured in. There's another source pouring into in an even greater fashion. Just a few weeks ago at our district men's conference, Brother Joel Urshan was one of our speakers. And in one of his sessions, he talked about growing up in the home of his mom and dad, Brother and Sister N.A. Urshan, He said, everywhere in our home, we had the word of God. It was on plackets on the table. It was in pictures on the wall. It was in the kitchen, in the dining room, in the hallway, in the bathroom. Wherever we went, his mother made sure that the word of God was somehow displayed. And so he said, there was no escaping that. Everywhere you went, there was the hope of the word of God pictures in every room. So he grew up in an environment that instilled hope in his life. Not hope in people or hope in things, but hope in the greatest thing ever, and that is the hope of the word of God. I want to uh, reiterate something that I mentioned Sunday, but uh, it's another reason that we need the house of God because we need the hope that comes to us through the word of the Lord. The songs that we sing are songs that are laced with the word of God, either literally or the promises of the word of God, the function of the word of God in them. And so the word is getting into our heart. There are several resources for that hope to flow. I'm confident, but I am thankful for the word of God. When I consider what the apostle Paul said to the church at Rome during the first century in Romans 15 and four, I want this to be the centerpiece of what we're discussing tonight. Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. This was written not for entertainment purposes. This was written not to intrigue us or to start debate, but they were written 
for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's a powerful statement that we can have hope, real hope, not hope in things, but real true hope. There are some in this building tonight that have lived long enough to see the demise of things that you never thought would ever go away. And so I will speak to one demographic here tonight or uh, in our congregation and I'll ask you, did you ever think you would live long enough to, to see Sears go out of business? Sears was the mainstay of America. My wife and I, a few, I think maybe last year or the year before, were had taken a trip and uh, all for a few days, and we had taken a little train ride up in the in the North Georgia mountains, and we were coming back from uh, the end of that ride. And so the man that was kind of showing us some of the scenes and sights along the way pointed out a few uh, homes that were built there along the river, and he said these homes were actually purchased as a kit many years ago from Sears. <laughs> You could get anything at Sears. Now, if you're not ashamed to date yourself, just raise your hand if you remember the Sears catalog. Well, there's some bold people here tonight, I can tell you that. That catalog that you about needed a back, about needed a back brace to move it from one table to the other. But in it was were all the wares, everything that you would possibly need, and we would not imagine life without Sears. I, for one, hated it for many reasons, but I could, if I could just be selfish, when I heard that Sears was going out of business, I'm a big Craftsman tool fan, and I was just wondering about one thing, where am I going to get my tools? And it was a happy day when I realized that Ace Hardware was going to assume that responsibility, although I don't think it's quite the same tool. But did you ever think you would live long enough to see some things no more that we considered to be the mainstay, the fundamental aspect or foundation. I'm thankful that tonight that my hope was not built on things that man has designed because it can fall by the wayside. But our hope is in the word of God, that word of God that never changes, that word that is our hope. I will never forget, I will never forget the first time we ever heard of the Bible being made in an audio version. I don't know why I'm choosing to date myself here this evening, but... Uh, I'm going to drag you along for the ride, so don't don't uh, get too comfortable. But I remember when we first ever heard that the Bible was available on cassette. Now you almost had to mortgage your house to buy a set of those back then, and they were very expensive. And then the dramatized version of the Bible, and when you got somebody that could read that Bible and read it to you, and you could read along and listen, and finally learn how to pronounce some of those words. And you say, so that's how that, that, that's how that goes. And, and the dramatized Bible. And I remember when we upgraded from our cassette to our, our CD version. Oh, what a, I mean, we were just in the catbird seat. And you can get all that free just anywhere in the world today. And so when we think about the word of God that is so accessible to us and to read the word of the Lord. And at night, sometimes when I'm struggling to read, I just turn on my audio Bible. And I just want the word of God to be the last thing that I hear, that word that just flows into our heart. I believe that that somehow gets in my, in my mind, in my spirit. I'm encouraged, my life can be encouraged by the word of God when all sorts of things are going on around us. I can enjoy a positive and a productive and a happy life if I make sure that I protect that one element. I wanna make sure that I have hope and that you never lose hope. One of the great sources of hope, of course, tonight what we're speaking about is the word of God. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna just visit the pages of the Bible if I'm not plugged in to that source of hope. So I always think it's important to pray before I read the word of the Lord. I wanna pray and make sure that my mind, I don't wanna just pick up the Bible and try to read it like a novel or try to check it off of my to-do list, but I want the word of God to be what David said that it could be. He said, thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I don't want it to just be a book on the shelf or just something that's a part of my day, but I want the word of God to be like David said, that lantern. There's a story told of a little girl that was riding a train many years ago with her mother. 
She didn't understand why in the middle of their ride that the trainman was going through the car and he was lighting all the lamps. And so she said to her mother, it's the middle of the day and the sun is shining bright. So why is he lighting the lanterns? The mother smiled and said, you'll see in just a moment. Soon the train plunged into a dark tunnel and it was in that moment that the young girl realized why somebody was being proactive. There's some darkness coming, but we're gonna get ahead of the darkness and we're gonna light the lamp of the word of God. Now I understand that the word of God contains thousands of verses that seem ordinary and many times we might even think unnecessary, but you can only understand the word of God when it becomes applicable into your life or to your circumstance. One day when you're going through a tunnel of sorrow, one day when you're going through a tunnel of temptation, maybe sometime when you're going through a tunnel of suffering, it will make sense that the word of God has been lit. You'll have value and appreciate the word that may be, or the scripture that may seem so commonplace today. The word of God is such a powerful source of strength. My relationship to the word of God, your relationship to the word of God determines my level of hope. And our hope is challenged often. I have at my disposal the power, the disposal, the powerful resource of his word. I mentioned it a moment ago, but it is everywhere. It is so accessible today. We have smartphones and we have uh, tablets and computers and things of that nature that funnel the word of God. We are without excuse. We are without excuse today to let the word of the Lord flow into our heart. And so if I want the word of God to be hope to me, then I've got to get into the word of, of the Lord and I've got to delve into the promises that he has. Several years ago, Brother J.H. Osborne, I, I remember sharing this some time back, but Brother uh, J.H. Osborne shared a story at, I believe, one of the men's conferences. Or it was a camp meeting, I think, in Tennessee. And he said a little boy had trouble sleeping every night through the night without falling out of the bed. Night after night, the same thing. Asleep for just a little while, and then he would topple out of the bed and onto the floor. So one night, this young man was staying with his grandparents, so his grandfather decided that when he tucked him in that night, he was just gonna sit down in a chair and he was gonna wait for the young boy to go to sleep and try to figure out what was going on. Sure enough, after just a few minutes of sleeping, the boy toppled out of the bed and he jumped up and he saw his grandfather sitting there and asked him if he knew what he was doing wrong. To which his grandfather said, he said, I think I figured it out. And your problem is, is that you're laying down too close to where you're getting in. He said, you need to lay down and then roll over a few times, <laughs> amen. And so I would say tonight that we can't just look at the word of God and just tiptoe around the edges. We need to get into the word and we need to roll over a few times and get into the word and let the word get into us, amen. I'm thankful for the word of God. I love Bible teaching and love preaching. I'm not just talking, I, I love to teach and preach, but I'm talking about listening and hearing the word of God. I love to hear the word of God taught and preached and to see the light come on and to feel that light, that knowledge. I'm thankful for the counsel that the word of God has. I don't wanna just tread around the edges. I don't wanna just hold on to the small end, but I wanna get into the book and let the word of the Lord speak to my heart. I want to look at some things tonight that can help not only give, but maintain hope in our lives. We need to understand and I think we do to a measure, but we need to fully understand the power and the hope of God's word. The word is under assault at this very hour. The word of God in our nation, in our world is under assault. There's a lot of biases about the word of God that are founded on ignorance. Some people feel as though the Bible is, maybe it's useful to, to kind of help the religious aspects of your life but they're not really sure that the word of God has any practical application in everyday aspects of life. But I don't think anything could be further from the truth. The word of God, fundamentally, the scripture provides hope in every aspect of our lives. When I read, especially in the Old Testament, you begin to read through the Levitical laws and, and you see those principles upon 
which so many practical aspects of life can be founded. How we can deal with certain aspects of life and how that we should how that we should have a Sabbath and how that we should give our body rest and how the land would have a year of rest and things of that nature that just seem to make so much sense. The, the Bible says in Psalms chapter one and verse number one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be, David said, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also, leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'm thankful for the word of God. He said meditate on it. Day and night, meditate on the word of God. And so what we see is a cause and effect. If we meditate on the word of God, the word of God gets in our heart the spirit and the hope of the word of God. Amen. I will tell you that if we sit down every day, day in and day out, and we only feed ourselves on the antichrist mindset that is in our that is prevalent in our world that's what david suggests in verse number 1 you can't walk in the in the counsel of the scornful you can't sit in the seat of the ungodly you can't just sit under the funnel of such an antichrist message amen if we do that then our mind is going to go down that path i want to position myself where the word of God I'm not talking about being ignorant to the, what's going on in our world but I want to position myself to where the word of God can push back the tide of negative can push back the tide that would try to steal my hope if I want hope if I want real hope then I have to realize that that hope is found in the word of God he said, if you feed yourself with the word, then we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Some people say, well, I don't have time to read the Bible. Yet they devote several hours to a favorite hobby or some kind of recreation, but we can't find time to let the word of God. You know, it's not that difficult to just set aside time to read two or three chapters of the scripture a day. And if you do that, you'll read through the Bible in a year. Amen. Now, some people say, well, you know, I don't have time to do that. And I'll tell you that it doesn't, it's not a difficult thing, but it does take discipline. Can I get a witness? <laughs> It's not difficult, but it requires discipline. I've got to make sure that I do that. So some people try to excuse themselves and say, well, I don't read the Bible because I don't understand it. But I will tell you that, again, we, were, we are without excuse because we have all manner of resources at our fingertips. But the greatest resource that we have is not found in technology. The greatest resource for understanding his word is not found in anything that man has made. But the greatest resource is what John 14, and 26 talks about and he said that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us and help us understand the truth of his word. Thank you for your response there because I believe I'm preaching to people that have understood that that what you understand in the word of God in some aspects is not something you, did, you dug out of a book or you read out of some other resource but the spirit of the Lord led us and was guiding us. It was a light of revelation and truth. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the word of God. With patience and consistent study, I believe that the Bible can become more and more meaningful to us as the spirit of God leads us and guides us from the inside out. Not just an outward influence, but an inside influence. And so we get in the habit of every day asking ourselves, I wonder what the word of God has to say about this. And so if you have a question about certain situations that you're in, we ought to use the word of God. If you need help parenting, we ought to use the word of God. If we need encouragement, we ought to use the word of God. If we have life decisions that are on the, we're standing on the threshold of, we need to use the word of God. Here's the basis for this step. Second Timothy the Bible says in chapter 3 and verse 16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished through unto good works. The word of God will work. The word of God will help us. 
the word of God is so useful. I, I'm, I believe again, I'm preaching to people that have been in a valley of decision and God through his word, it may have been in your own private reading and study or devotion time. It may have been while you were in the middle of a service and someone was preaching, but the word of God became relevant and you found your answer and consequently you found hope because of the word of God. God uses it to prepare and equip us to do every good work. The Bible is the most practical book in the world. We can put the Bible to use in relationships. We can put the Bible to use in situations on our job. We can put the Bible to use in business dealings in the world that we have to deal with. There shouldn't be any area of our life that is not under the influence of the word of God. God's word gives us hope. So if we're faced with a situation that seems impossible, then I want to read about the crossing of the Red Sea. If I'm facing something where it seems just completely improbable that I am going to survive, I want to read about how God brought water out of a rock, how he brought manna in the middle of a wilderness, and how he caused the walls of Jericho to fall. I want to read about how God raised the sick or healed the sick, raised the dead, and how God did miraculous things. If I am facing the impossible, then I want to go back to the intersection where somebody else was facing the impossible and God moved and ministered in their life. So when we read things about those moments in somebody else's life, it gives us hope that there is, that there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel of our situation, and God brings us hope. Jeremiah 29 and 11 the scripture says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so I'm thankful for the hope. The scripture calls, calls it the anchor of the soul. Hebrews 6 and 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Hope makes a soul, our emotions, or our will, sure steadfast. An anchor preserves a ship. An anchor holds something solid and secure. And so when winds come and waves, uh, when the waves come and the winds begin to blow, as long as the anchor holds, then those that are on board can understand all is well, as long as the anchor holds. And I'm thankful for the anchor of the word of God. In trials of life, our mind can remain calm as long as the spirit we know is in control. Hope, the anchor of the soul. So Jesus doesn't just give us hope. He is hope. He doesn't just offer and extend hope. He is hope. He doesn't show us the way. He is the way. He doesn't just shed some light on truth. He is the absolute truth. And so circumstances may change. Our life's circumstances, our life's foundation at times may change, but Jesus never changes. I'm gonna ask our musicians to come if they will. I'm thankful for the hope that we have in the Lord. Now, there are obvious times that the word of God doesn't specifically speak to our situation. The Bible may not say thou shalt or thou shalt not about some moment frozen in time in our life. And in those cases, I believe that we can still find direction in the principles of the word of God. There are principles that are true and steadfast, unwavering, unmoving principles that are in the word of God. The principles of God's word, tremendously useful. We can take two of the biggest principles of behavior in scripture. So we look in the book of Matthew and we see one religious expert, somebody that had given themselves to the study of the law and they approached Jesus in Matthew 22 and 36 and they said, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And Jesus said, This is the first and great commandment and the second is likened unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when we think about 
the beauty of an ornate door. That's a wonderful thing. But what's really making it have the ability to be a door and function as a door are the hinges that it hangs on. We don't really think about the hinges all that often until they maybe need a little oil or something. We don't really think about the hinge. But Jesus gave two passages and principles in Scripture. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And he said, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two things hang all the law and the prophets. On these two things hinge everything. And so when I say that we can find principles in the word of God, there are situations that we may find in our lives needing direction and these two principles can go a long, long way. Have you ever just thought how far that just loving your neighbor as yourself would go? Just the principle of that. I need to learn those principles and allow the spirit of God to touch my heart and life. Psalms 119 and 11, I'll ask you to stand Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid. Hiding the word. The reason hiding the word of God is so important is because it helps me to overcome spontaneous moments. The word of God grounds me. Keeps me from being pulled from side to side. Just holds me in the crevice of his hand. So hiding the word of God is not the same thing as memorizing the word of God. Because when you hide something, that means you are giving that the place of the highest esteem. I'm hiding this. And so when I say someone's on my mind or in my heart, that's what we mean. We have hidden them in a very special place. I'm expressing a sentimental attachment to it. One preacher many years ago said, either the book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. I gotta make sure nothing gets in the path of me and the word of God. And I want to do so by hiding it in my heart. John 14, John 1 and 14 rather, says the word was made flesh. John defines what that word is, not just a book, but that Jesus would be made flesh. Someone once said that if you convince a man that there is no hope, then he would curse the day he's born. Years ago, the S-4 submarine was, an an S-4 submarine was rammed by another ship and it quickly sank. The entire crew was trapped in its prison house of death. Many ships rushed to the scene of that disaster that happened off the coast of Massachusetts. We don't know what took place really down below the sunken submarine, but we can be sure that men clung, as men clung bravely to life, that with every breath they made, oxygen was becoming a more and more precious commodity. A diver, one of the rescue divers on the team, placed his helmeted ear against the side of that vessel and he listened intently for any signs of life. And in the stillness and the quietness of all that was happening, he heard a tapping noise. Someone, he learned, was tapping out a question in the dots and the dashes of the Morse code. And the question came very slowly, very meticulously, but very intentional. Is there hope? Is there hope? And so here is a crew of men where death seemed so imminent. But one man among those dying men had a question. Is there hope? I believe around us today that amid all the chaos that's going on in our world, if we could get alone and get still and get quiet, we could hear the cry of the world and the world is asking, is there hope? I don't wanna hide the answer to that question. I don't wanna conceal the answer to that question but I want to be able to stand to say, yes, there is hope. Yes, there's hope. Yes, hope is not going to be found just in the programs or the systems of our church or any other. The hope is not going to be found just in one central general longitude or latitude, but hope is found in him. I'm thankful that I have him. Aren't you? Amen. Let's magnify the Lord together. Lord, I love you. Today.